Hello and welcome. This is Greg Justice from Scripter Publishing Group, and I'm here with a very special guest today. It is Gunnar Peterson, who is a Beverly Hills-based trainer based uh, in California, and his clients include celebrities, professional athletes, along with everyday people. And Gunnar is also the Director of Strength and Endurance for the Los Angeles Lakers, and I believe he is with the Lakers as we speak. So welcome, Gunnar, and thank you for joining me to talk about Jack and his legacy. Thank you. I tell you, this is absolutely an honor, and I don't throw that around lightly. Um, you know, Jack was a major, major force uh, in my life, and, and probably in, in not just how I carry myself, but where I ended up professionally. I mean, um, he set the table for all of us, and, and there should be like a Jack LaLanne day where every every trainer gives thanks to the fact that this man – obviously he started he was such a what did what did there was an, something Arnold called him something like an apostle for exercise or something I remember hearing that the Pope but of fitness. He, <laughs> they, they, I'll take that too good for him <laughs> um but uh not just that but the fact that he he opened one of the first gyms I don't think he was the first but he was one of them and he promoted that and he, and he and he pushed it and he talked about how that being the downfall of the society and and I just look at it and I think you know, I have, uh, this is funny. Uh, so I met Jack at his 90th birthday. Mm -hmm. um, obviously had known about him for a hundred years before that. Um, and I hope you're not doing that math. Um, <laughs> and, but before that, a friend of mine was a, uh, uh, on a show, the Bonnie Hunt show. Mm -hmm. And Jack did a guest appearance. And my friend got my weight belt signed by Jack LaLanne. And it's funny because I have a ton of memorabilia hanging in my gym sign and people have told me it's all worthless because I have it all personalized. But to me, that's where the real value is. I'm not trying to sell it. Um, but it hangs right over my office door and it says, uh, I think it says, I'm in San Antonio now with the Lakers, so I can't go read it to, to check it. So don't quote me, but it says something like to, uh, to Gunner, a great trainer, something, anything you want to do, you can do Jacqueline. And it hangs over my office door. And I've had people say to me, what is that thing? Why does that thing get to be over the office door? That's prime real estate. And I think Jacqueline, man, how do you not know why that deserves top billing? It's Jacqueline. So, so if that, in a nutshell, we could end this right now, because that tells you what I think of him, what I think he did for so many people's fitness, so many people's fitness careers. And, um, and that's how he factors into my life. I, I love that answer. Thank you. That, that's very special. Thanks for, for sharing that. Um, now, oh. you mentioned that you were with Jack at his 90th birthday party. Can you tell us a little uh, bit I was, about that? I said a few words, uh, nothing that impactful, but just wanting to say essentially what I just said to you about how, you know, without Jack, there's, the fitness industry has a, a, a totally different look to it without Jack Lane, that's for sure. Yes. Well, what, what do you feel like his legacy is? When you think of Jack LaLanne, what is the legacy that he left behind for all of us in the fitness profession? I think he, a couple things. I think he made people aware his show ran, I want to say like 30 years or something, his show ran, something close to that, an incredible run in television and, and probably you know couldn't happen again today. But in any event, he made us responsible for our own fitness, right? You have to do this. You have to train your body. You have to keep yourself healthy. That's, that's your responsibility. It's incumbent upon you to take care of your machine. That's one. And the other one that he did, which I think is um, sometimes lost in, in today's people is that you can do it. You can, you can, it's, it, there, you are not out of the race ever. You can start today. It doesn't matter if you're, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you can start today and do something. And whatever you start, whatever you do is going to leave you better off than you were before you started. And then circle back, you know, it's chicken or egg here. It's your responsibility and you can do it. So you can do it and it's your responsibility. How do you see this? Either way, he made it possible. He made it available. Um, and he let us know, women included, which at the time when he started his show was in the 50s. but that was, you know, people didn't talk like that. That wasn't a topic. And, and here he was stepping up saying, go do this. 
Exactly. You know, and I think actually more than that, you, you, you have to go do this, but not with a, he wasn't admonishing. He wasn't wagging his finger at anybody. He just said, you have to do this. You have to do this. You have to take care of yourself. It's our national responsibility, which I thought was a great thing too. The strength of our nation is through the strength of our people. So we have to be strong. It's, it's our responsibility. Exactly. And you know, part of that is mindset and people don't realize how important that mindset and Jack was so far ahead of his time because of simply that, you know, that six inches between your ears is so important. Let me, let me, and he, he let me jump in with how far ahead of it. So he was far way, way ahead of his time on mindset. That's for sure. But I'll tell you something else that people don't know or may not know. He was so far ahead of his time on the exercises and how to train the body mm-hmm. separate from the mind, right? I was in um, I was in Italy with a client, with Jennifer Lopez, um, and I was in my room clicking around on TV, and I came across the Jack LaLanne show from back in the day. And obviously black and white, he's in the jumpsuit. Who knew his Italian was so good? Uh, that's the joke there. Okay, stay with me, guys. <laughs> anyway, he was standing next to a chair, and he was holding a book in one hand, and he was balancing on one leg, but holding the chair as a spot if you needed it, and he was bending down, touching the floor, and coming up. So if you look at that in today's terms, right, it's an uneven load, mm-hmm. unilateral work, or contralateral, depending on which arm. I don't remember which arm he was holding in. Um, lift. And it's resistance training. It's not cardio. And he's saying to the women, you can do this. This is a move. And if you look also to a degree, could be considered controversial because he's targeting muscles of the lower back, right? Part of your core that people don't always recognize. And he's doing this 70 years ago, 60 years ago from when I saw it. And I thought, he's so far ahead. Like back then it was like push-ups and jogging and sit-ups. And here's this guy promoting this on this advanced fitness exercise science, if you will, level. And I just, I remember sitting in my room going, wow, that's, and the fact that his show was still airing overseas Mm -hmm. this many years later, that's, that's a legacy, that's impact, that's, um, you're you're making changes. That's, That's impressive. Exactly. Well, let me ask you this. If you were to sum up Jack LaLanne, in three words, what would those three words be and why? Positive, work ethic as one word. Sorry, you'll have to give me a uh, mm-hmm. the that one. there. Okay. Um, uh, what else would I say? Positive, uh, work ethic, and inclusive. That's a great one. I love that because, you know, actually Jack was – the first person to work with athletes with weights, work with women with weights, and work with the disabled with weights. So he was increased in bringing everybody into the fold. And and he and that's why I said I touched on earlier. Yes. For him, it was it wasn't about why you can't, why you shouldn't, why you might not be able to. It was you have to, and here's how you can. And to me, that approach is just uh, it's beautiful. Yes, and those three words, positive, work ethic, inclusive, that sums it up. And, and I couldn't have said it any better. Maybe we switch jobs.